Hey, I'm Tyler with Bike Room. I'm here with Everett Erickson, the engineering manager of the Advanced Products Division at Fox. And we are here after just finishing our second day of test riding on the new Fox Live Valve, which is an electronically controlled compression damping system you guys developed for really, I mean, it seems like for racing, but it's kind of good for everything. So in a nutshell, like what is the system and why make it? Yeah, I think it's good for anybody who's ever rolled into a downhill section with their lockout engaged on the suspension. <laughs> We've all done. <laughs> um, so the computer is reading the terrain and it's making decisions about whether the suspension should be firm or should be soft. On smooth terrain, it's efficient, pedals great. It's like you have a lockout engaged or firm mode engaged. And then as soon as it detects bumpy terrain, it automatically switches to soft mode. Um, for me, it allows me just to focus on hitting my lines or enjoying riding or talking with my friends. And it totally removed having to flip levers or think about my suspension. Right. Um, so in a nutshell, it's a, it's a more complicated system from the suspension standpoint, but it makes the bike much more simple and easier to ride. Yeah, basically. I was thinking like user-friendly, but you don't even have to use anything. There's nothing to do really, except that there, there are some adjustments. So basically it's going to work on its own to either keep it firm, open it up when you hit something, but you can adjust within five levels how much of an impact it takes to activate it. And that's, I mean, that's kind of it, right? Like, yeah, it's super simple. I mean, there is some personal preference as far as, you know, how big of a bump do you want to hit and have the system hold them. Uh, and that also depends on the riding area that you're at. So I think the idea is you might fool around with it for a week while you, you get to understand what it's doing and what setting you like. And then probably you just set it and forget it and you just ride it from there. Right. And so we've been riding around, it was different bikes, but you and I were riding the same bike, the Scott Genius, which is 150 mil rear travel and kind of regardless of what setting it is. So one means it's going to take the least amount of impact force to activate it. Even on one and two, it was kind of worked perfectly. Like, you know, it's hard to throw that uh, applause out there, say this is a perfect thing. And, you know, there's... I guess it's first cons, it's a little bit heavier, but it worked pretty much exactly like you guys promised, which is super impressive. And it made this 150 mil travel bike climb like an XC full suspension bike. There's, I was looking down, there's still a little movement, but I think that's part of the tuning. So if Scott can say, okay, we want it to be this firm when it's firm, some people could say we want it fully locked, right? Yeah, depending on the bike, if it's a cross-country race bike, it could be fully locked. On these bikes, I think it's more appropriate. It's kind of a firm medium setting, you know, I think, that way. And then, so it's up to the OEM to kind of set the different parameters at the different levels, and then that gives you the range. And they can design it based on what the bike's intended to do, how much travel it has. But then it also, so when it's open, the, the valve there is fully open, and the valve here is fully open, but on the forks, you guys have a second open adjustment so that the user can decide uh, how open you want it to be. So if you, if you like a little firmer open or a wide open, you still have some control over just how open it is, but the firm one is kind of factory set. Yep, yep. and that, again, is the vision that the product manager has for the bike. Um, we view it just the same as setting the valving and the dampers. Now they can also set the controller parameters. And right. Just an extra level of tuning for the OEM. And is there any kind of that similar open adjustment on the shocks? Yeah, it's the same. It's actually the same valve in the fork and the shocks. So you tune it the same way. It right. operates exactly the three millimeter Allen wrench. You can see it here. Perfect. And then you still have your normal external rebound control. So a lot of the things you're familiar with from the rest of it are still here. You still can do volume spacers and air pressure adjustments. It's really just that on off of the compression adjustment that the whole live live valve system is doing. Yeah, and so you ask why do it? Um, the system knows if you're climbing or if you're on flat terrain and you're on down there. You can't do that on regular passive suspension. So it just opens up whole other avenues of us to add more function. It's smarter now about what type of situation you're in and can dial the suspension in. You don't have to interact with it. Yeah, it's a key point that the algorithm actually changes. So it knows if you're climbing, you know, it can time when this one reacts versus that one reacts because if you're, you know, chugging off a climb, your front's going to hit and then maybe like half a second later the rear hit. This is flat mode. This is downhill mode. This is uphill mode. Yeah, 
yeah, and then it also has a sensor on the controller that knows if you're in free fall, so if you're jumping while you're in the air, the suspension opens, so you're guaranteed a soft landing. Yeah. Another thing you couldn't do with the right. remote lever. It's not something you want to be messing with while you're airborne at yeah. all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the battery it gets between 16 and 20 hours of burn time, depending on the terrain that you're riding. Um, if the battery, if you forget to charge it and the battery dies in the ride, it opens the suspension first and then shuts down. So you still ride; it's just soft suspension for us to ride, but it hasn't ruined your your day. Yeah, um, and it's a pretty quick charge. If if you forget and you're you're brushing your teeth, you're getting dressed, just plug in. 15 minute charge will give you what like two hours of ride time. Right, right. Yeah. And then full charge is about an hour and a half. So. Um, that was a big issue for me in the in the beginning was just this range anxiety of having to deal with the batteries. We tried to make a system that even if you forget to do the right things, it's not that big of a penalty. Right. Awesome, man. And then it comes, it's built on a rear shock that's based kind of off the flow deck. So there's only one rear shock option, but you can get it on the 36, the 34, the 34 step cast, and the 32 step cast. Yeah. And I mean... The, the shock does come in a, a trunnion configuration, and so we we may it's one type of shock, but we sell a shock for all types of frames.